anchor text. Two Bear Cubs from A Miwok Folk Tale, adapted by Robert D. Sansusi. Characters Storyteller Mother Grizzly Older Brother Younger Brother Hawk Fox Badger Mother Deer Two Fawns Mountain Lion Mouse Measuring Worm Tutakana Prologue Storyteller enters from stage left. Many snows have come and gone since this story was first told. My people, the Miwok, live in California, some in what is now called Yosemite Valley. We tell stories of the old days when animal people lived in the valley. One story begins with Mother Grizzly going to the river to catch fish for herself and her cubs. Exits. Scene 1. Setting. A forest and mountain, stage left. Open sky dotted with clouds, stage right. Blue cloth or painted cardboard across the front of the stage suggests a river. Mother Grizzly enters from stage left, holding a fish basket, and stands on the riverbank. Her cubs, younger brother and older brother, enter and begin to play in the water. Older brother, laughing and splashing. Don't be afraid of a little water, younger brother. Younger brother, splashing back. I'm not, older brother. Mother Grizzly, scolding. Children, stop scaring away the fish, or we will have nothing to eat. Out of the water, now. They obey, but manage a last splash or two. I want you to gather berries, but stay close and do not go down river. Strange things happen there. Mother Grizzly moves to stage left. The cubs move to stage right, while playing and pushing each other. A berry bush appears. Older brother. Look at these berries. He picks and eats them greedily. They are so sweet. Taste them. Younger brother. We should take them back to mother. When older brother ignores him, the younger cub begins eating berries too. Suddenly. He rubs his stomach. I have eaten too many. Older brother, we will bring some back later. Oh, I am full too. Pointing. Let's see what is downriver. Younger brother, worried. We are not supposed to go there. Older brother, taunting, starts off. I see only the river and trees and stones. What is there to fear? After a moment's hesitation, Younger brother follows. Younger brother, rubbing his eyes. I'm tired. The hot sun and my full belly make me want to sleep. Older brother, yawning. A nap would be good. A raised platform, decorated to look like a rock, slides into view. Younger brother, pointing. See that big flat rock? It looks so warm. Let's rest there. The cubs lie down side by side, stretch, and fall asleep. Storyteller, entering stage left. The cubs fell asleep on the stone, but the stone was the seed of a mountain. As they slept, the stone grew bigger and bigger, higher and higher. His hand, spiraling upward, suggests the growing mountain. It carried them so high that only Hawk saw them as he flew by. Pauses. Hawk enters, stage right, waving his arms like wings. He flies past the rock, looking at the sleeping cubs, and then flies back off stage the way he came. Storyteller continuing. Meanwhile, Mother Grizzly wondered what had become of her cubs. Exits. Stage left. Scene 2. Fox and Badger are on stage, leaning cedar planks against a tent-shaped frame of poles. Mother Grizzly enters, stage left, calling. Older brother! Younger brother! Mother Grizzly sees Fox and Badger. Fox! Badger! Have you seen my cubs? Fox. No. 
I have been helping Badger build a new home. Badger. Neither of us has seen them. We will help you look for them. Fox, Badger, and Mother Grizzly search to the right. Mother Deer and Fawns enter stage left and seat themselves grinding acorns. Fox, Badger, and Mother Grizzly return to stage left and discover Mother Deer and her two fawns. Mother Grizzly. Mother Deer, my little ones are missing. Have you seen them? Mother Deer. They have not come by while my children and I were grinding acorns, but we will help you find them. Mother Deer and Fawns rise and join the others as they move to stage right and then back again to left. They meet Mountain Lion, carrying a load of firewood. Mother Grizzly Mountain Lion, we are looking for my lost cubs. Mountain Lion sets her burden down. I will help you find them. All move to stage right, while Mouse enters from left and sits. Mouse is weaving a basket. The group at stage right moves left and meets Mouse. Mother Grizzly Mouse, have you seen my cubs? We have searched everywhere for them. We have looked in hollow logs and caves and in the berry patch and the honey tree. Mouse rising No, but I will help you. Perhaps they went down river. Mother Grizzly, I warned them not to go there. Mother Deer, patting Mother Grizzly's shoulder and glancing at her own fawns. Sometimes our little ones do not listen very well. I agree that we should look downriver. The animals on stage move slowly toward the mountain. Fox, stopping, pointing. Look, everyone, there is a mountain where there was only a stone before. All slowly raise their heads as they scan the mountain from base to summit. As they do, Hawk enters as before, flapping his wings. Mother Grizzly, I see Hawk. Cups paws around her mouth and shouts up to Hawk. Hawk, have you seen my lost cubs? Hawk calling down. They are asleep on this strange new mountain. Mother Grizzly calling up. Please fly to my children. Wake them and help them find their way down. Hawk pantomimes flying toward cubs and being blown back by mountain winds. After several tries, he speaks to those below. Hawk calling down. The wind will not let me reach your little ones. Someone will have to climb up and rescue them. Storyteller enters, stage left. One by one, the animals tried to reach the cubs. Animals pantomime their attempts as Storyteller speaks. Mother Grizzly tried several times, but always tumbled back. Mouse jumped from stone to stone, but quickly got scared and jumped back down. Badger climbed a bit higher. Mother Deer, a little bit higher. Fox did even better, but none succeeded. Even Mountain Lion failed. When Mother Grizzly sees this, she begins to weep. The other creatures gather around to console her. Unnoticed by them, Measuring Worm enters. Mother Grizzly, sadly. Mountain Lion, you are the best climber and were my best hope. There is no one now who can save my cubs. Measuring Worm. I will try. The other animals turn and stare at him, and then all except Mother Grizzly begin to laugh. Mountain Lion. Foolish Measuring Worm, do you think you can do what the rest of us have failed to do? Mouse, meanly. To Takana, your name is longer than you are. Storyteller, appearing stage left. My people call Measuring Worm Tutakana, which means Little Curl Stretch. He moves by stretching, too, then curling, talk, the way a caterpillar moves. Mother Grizzly, drying her eyes, I welcome your help. Measuring Worm begins to climb, all the while crying, Tutak. The other animals sit 
staring at the mountain, watching as the worm stretches and curls in a climbing motion. Measuring worm, loudly. To talk! To talk! Scene 3. Storyteller. In time, Measuring Worm climbed even higher than Mountain Lion. He climbed so high that the animals below could no longer see or hear him. Sometimes he would grow afraid and stop when he saw how high he had climbed and how much higher he had to go. Then he thought about poor Mother Grizzly so worried at the bottom of the mountain. He thought about the cubs in danger at the top. Then he found his courage again and continued to climb, all the while crying, measuring worm, To talk! To talk! To talk! Storyteller exits as measuring worm finally crawls onto the rock. He bends over the two sleeping cubs and calls. Measuring worm, Wake up! The cubs are drowsy as they wake and stretch and yawn. Older brother crawls and looks over the side of the rock. Younger brother, something terrible has happened. Look how high we are. Younger brother, also on his knees, peers down. We are trapped here. We will never get back to our mother. The cubs begin to cry. They have forgotten measuring worm. Measuring worm comforting the cubs. Do not be afraid. I have come to guide you safely down the mountain. Just follow me and do as I say. We will follow the safe path that brought me here. Older brother, I am afraid I will fall. Younger brother, I am scared too. Measuring worm, gently. Surely Mother Grizzly's children are not so afraid, for she is the bravest creature in the valley. Older brother, puffing out his chest and beating it with his paw. We are grizzlies. We are brave. Younger brother, doing same. We will follow you. They pantomime, following a safe path in single file with measuring worm leading. Older brother following and younger brother behind. Below, Fox suddenly spots something stands up and peers more closely. Fox, excitedly pointing to a spot about halfway up the mountain. Mother Grizzly, look! Measuring Worm is guiding your cubs down the mountain. All animals look where Fox is pointing. Mother Grizzly, joyful, fearful. Be careful, my children! Mother Deer, reassuring her friend. Trust Measuring Worm. He has brought them safely this far. He will not fail you now. The animals continue to watch. They slowly lower their gaze to follow the climbers as they come down the mountain. At last, the cubs and measuring worm make a final leap from the mountain to the ground. The cubs run to their mother. Mother Grizzly gives them a big hug. Then she pushes them away and shakes her finger at them. Mother Grizzly scolding. Both of you have been very naughty. Look at the trouble and worry you have caused us all. You did not listen to me and went where you were not supposed to go. Older brother, hanging head. I'm sorry. I won't do it again. Younger brother, starting to cry. I will never disobey you again. Mother Grizzly, gathering them up in her arms again. Be sure that you remember what happened today. But do not cry, little ones. It has all ended well, thanks to the help and courage of Measuring Worm. The animals gather around Measuring Worm and congratulate him. Storyteller enters, stage left. Then all the animals decided to call the new mountain Tutakanula, which means Measuring Worm Stone. This was to honor the heroic worm who did what no other creature could do. He saved the two bear cubs. The mountain held this name for many years until newcomers named the mountain El Capitan, 
we Miwok still call the mountain Tutakanula to this day. The End